looks like a, he gets off on. I board. still love him for it though. Hey, We're welcome to Game Club. You, hey guys, you we're, we're talking live. about parsecs, I know, but we parsecs are an important discussion. Ashley yeah. hates all of our fun intros that are supposed to be out of context. Last She's immediately time she was, like, and none. Whatever, last time she was talking about crabs. That's true, but you guys mm -hmm. started in the middle of a conversation. What's, that's the point, is so that people wonder what was the beginning that's of true. the conversation. They were talking about parsecs. And how Ashley's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Let's talk about Ashley having none of it. This <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We'll I feel talk like she's going to hand out homework and we just fill it out and give look, it back. Look, we're here to talk about Guacamelee. It's very true. A, a suitable game to talk about for an extended period of time. And the last of our game clubs for this year, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, the last of our new game game clubs. Yes. 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 Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. I love this game. I was so happy that this came up in the cylinder. Um, I actually I didn't play this game for a long time right after it came out uh, because it came out for PS3 and Vita neither of which I had access to at the time and I resolved like I just I resigned myself to never having never getting to play it and then it came out on everything else in a couple of different editions and it's so worth it once I actually like finally picked it up and got to playing it so much fun. It's a it's a really great game. I actually saw this game at IndieCade 2013. Um 2013 I think. And Drinkbox Studios was there showcasing their game and just to get to see them directly interact with people who were testing their game at the time. I um, mean getting to test the game at the time was very cool and then uh, to see it come out on a, a big platform and then see it come out even bigger than that. It's just so exciting to see kind of the development process that goes through that. So every time it comes out, every time people talk about it, I've brought, this is probably the fifth video that I've, I've talked about Guacamele in. Um, I'm just so excited because those guys were so cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what did you think about the game? The game's amazing. It's it's fantastic. It was easily one of the most polished games at IndieCade that I saw. Um, if not the most polished game, it's so much fun. The co-op is great. It, it You don't get in each other's way. Like it manages to make things feel tight and exciting without feeling like you're stopping on one another's heads, which is great. It's also <laughs> nice that it's drop in, drop out. Yeah. I will say, if you happen to be playing with a four-year-old, occasionally that can get in your the way. The portals <laughs> have got to be really annoying if you're playing with a four-year-old. The main issue I had, well, no, again, for to, to start with, I would like to say, though, I, I completely agree. It is a great co-op system, and I, I liked it a lot. Um, the, the main issue I was having, which, who's playing with a four-year-old? Uh, well, you are. Me, you are, other than me. Is he he would get so wrapped up in remembering like the controls, like to do up and B and things like that, that we'd go through a door and he'd just keep holding up, and so we'd go through the door, I'd walk three steps and then go back through the door, and then we'd go through the door and walk three steps and he'd go back there. Like, Eli, please. This is when I don't know why you didn't just mm -hmm. unplug the controller and then you're controlling, you're controlling my man. We're the same man now, and you just give him a controller that's off. Come yeah, on. He doesn't buy that. Really? No. Oh, that's he's like past that point, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. He absolutely knows when he's in control of something. That's Though awesome. it is really cute when he's, if we're like running along, he's like, wait, wait for me, friend. Come on. Friend? And he's, he's is that what he called? You're not his dad anymore. You're just friend. Well, he's, he's talking to the characters on the screen. Oh, oh I see. And he was he was playing as uh, Tostada, I think, yeah. the, the girl. And he, he thought it was Spider Man. So he's like, I'm Spider Man. He, he's he's on Tostada. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can get. Like in the Steam Workshop, mm -hmm. well, you were playing on Xbox though, right? Yes, Xbox One. Uh, on Steam Workshop, you can get some pretty funny skins. They they have costumes in on the Xbox One as well. I haven't op unlocked any of them yet, but I, I have started to look through them, and that's a whole other level of the game that I haven't even touched yet, which is the skins can actually modify your stats in some ways. Like uh, you acquire stamina faster, or you uh, steal life on melees and things like that. So that's a really cool like sub part to the game that... Uh, it's silver based and some of them are just like microtransaction mm -hmm. but a lot of them I think you can get with just the silver which is something you get for defeating areas uh, but uh, overall I really like the game it's, it, it's fun when you can have a game that takes so much from other games but doesn't feel so derivative like yeah. sometimes they borrow heavily from games and you're like well thanks you just stole some other game but this one it's like it's got so many call outs so many shout outs uh, like strong bads in there. There's references to Super Mario Brothers. There's obvious references to Metroid. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it's a Metroidvania game. Yeah. Like for for those who aren't familiar with it, it's it's a side-scrolling action platformer that involves a lot of exploration and going back, to, like backtracking to places to explore new areas. Once you get abilities that will get you into those areas that were previously inaccessible, you know, pretty pretty typical stuff that way. But it doesn't feel typical when you're playing it. Which, I mean, normally that's a that's something I don't hugely enjoy is having to go back to an area just to get through that one door that just has a treasure chest behind it. It's like, oh, okay, I'll spend 
15 minutes going back to the area. I will say the teleporter system kind of eases some of that, where you can just hop in an Olmec head and boop, you're off to the other area. Mm -hmm. uh, and just moving around in the game is so much fun. The, the, the transition time is so dynamic and interesting that it kind of takes a lot of the sting out for that. I think that the most interesting thing about this game, I don't know if they're going to play any gameplay while we're talking about it, but definitely the most interesting thing in my mind uh, is the art style. The art style is oh, by far. so mm -hmm. colorful and bright and fun, and I love that you're fighting like giant pinata monsters, <laughs> and uh, it's just beautiful. I think it was really the thing that stood out for this game for me. Yeah, I think this is going to be the kind of game that ages really well because of the art style, because it makes, it, like it doesn't try to be realistic or it goes in the complete opposite direction to be as crazy as possible. And it just, it looks beautiful as a result. And I think it's gonna look beautiful for years and years and years to come. Yeah, it's a simple, clean, cartoony kind of style that uh, just doesn't need, I mean, it's in HD and that's all it really needs. It doesn't, until we're ready for the world of 4K and everybody's like, oh, look how ugly it is at 1080. Yes. Yeah. Did you just cross your eyes saying that like a... Did I? <laughs> That's, well, it's the coming of UHD. <laughs> it's making me a little... Um, yeah, I think uh, that, like, the art style of the game, I don't know, I kind of think it was, like, an acid trip after eating, like, too many Doritos. <laughs> Fair enough. Mariel, are you comfortable with your people being dwindled down to acid trip after eating Doritos? <laughs> <laughs> She's comfortable with it. It's um, you know, it's it's very it's luchador themed, yeah. But it also is it's very cheeky, in like when it takes cultural references. It's like, yeah, her name's Tostada. I feel like this is a game that Muriel thinks I wrote about Mexican culture. Like, you think that's how it goes? Like, it's the whitest white person is like, I know Mexico. Her name's Tostada. And they're like, <laughs> me amigos. When I first started playing the game, I was a little bit worried by that. I was like, oh god. I was like, is this is this okay for me to be <laughs> playing? I was like, this is. Am I, I was like, am I? I was like, am I? Yeah, like, am this I allowed racist, to find this it? funny, or no is racist. that is that like? Bleh. But after after about oh, two minutes, I went. Yeah, fuck it. This is hilarious. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. It's just it's cheeky and it's irreverent and it's insane. I mean, you start off by dying and going off to rescue El Presidente's daughter. Yeah, you need to get that sweet from El. What's his name? Shalaka. Ch it's oh like, man, hold on. Shaka. Yeah, I'm. I I, I'm. They don't ever. They don't say it, so it's just words. Um, <laughs> just a bunch of us trying just, to say just it. letters. Uh, I did particularly. Carlos. Particularly like Carlos. Yes, yeah, Carlos. Carlos. How could we not remember Carlos? Those are yeah. Look how awesome I'm pretty like. sure he's he's got a last name, and that's the he does. thing. So um, I want to be a, a chicken <laughs> outfit. I I forget what the special ability of the chicken outfit is, but it it comes with something. I love the Dia de Maybe you kick small humans, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can become a chicken in the game. That's uh, I especially love Carlos the part. Carlos Kalaka. There we go. Kalaka. Kalaka. There. Yeah. You get, every time you get the power up and it's got this like dramatic scene and then eventually he just gives up on naming them just like wall derp derp. Yep. <laughs> or the one time where it's just like you get nothing. No power. <laughs> the little goat man is, is really cool. I like him. Yeah. The, the whole thing is a lot of fun. How I have um, 15 see. bucks on Xbox One. Yeah. It's 15 on Steam as well. There are a couple Worth different it. editions. There's the gold edition and then there's like a Serpo, super turbo championship edition that has some extra bosses and levels and some extra collectibles, I think. Um, that's the one I played because that's all, the only one available on Xbox One. Yeah. Steam's got both. They're the same price. Why wouldn't you go I, for the I, I don't know why. Um, I actually, I originally got the gold edition. It was before the other one came out. And um, I had a problem when I went back to play this game for Game Club because I was very near the end. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of really super cool abilities and the platforming gets really tough at that point. It's very precise. It demands a lot of you. And um, so I was near the end. It's been a while and I've forgotten fuck everything. <laughs> like I, I don't remember a single move. So I decided to create a new game to just go back to the beginning and at least like refamiliarize myself with the basics. Thanks to the beauty of cloud saves, my save is everywhere. And in order to make a new game, I'd have to like erase the game that I have, which I am not doing. So I bought the Super <laughs> Super Turbo Championship Edition, so I have a different version. Wait, so there's not save slots on the Steam version? Because on the Xbox One version, there's like four save slots. I well, I went into it and it was just like, um, continue. And so I went to like new game and it was like erase your progress. Nope. 
Hmm. That so, might have been something from the Super Turbo Championship yeah, thing. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Or maybe a console only, but that doesn't make sense. Either yeah. way, I bought it twice, and if it says anything about the quality of the game, I'm not sorry. Well, that's <laughs> good. No, that's good. I think that definitely says a lot about the quality of the game. For sure. Well, to be fair, I was told I was getting like an 80% discount on the Super Turbo Championship Edition as like a loyalty thing. Oh, that's cool. I'm pretty sure I paid the same price. What? Huh? I think you got a billing issue there. Yeah. I want to check some loyalty <laughs> to your wallet there. It's yeah. fine. Support Drinkbox Studio is a little bit extra. Fair. Pay, I'm go. paying a lot for a save slot. That's fine. Have they ever Fair. talked about a sequel or anything? They have not. I, mm -hmm. I mean, Drinkbox is working on something new. So. I'll never get to be one again. Never find out what happens. You know, like him this and is President this is the kind of game Dalton. where I you feel like guess. it could have it could have a sequel and they could do really well. Probably not as one though. I feel like it'd need to be a different story. Can Megan, I be El guess. Presidente's daughter? Maybe she was secretly kicking ass the whole time. Could be. Man, well, she she's, did reveal she's a her straight lack up of peach, isn't she? Uh, well, she did at one point reveal her lack of uh, virginity ah. when they're talking about sacrificing. He's like, "Oh, El Presidente's daughter, is spicy." Hey, she gets around. You know, she has a good time. <laughs> It's good to be El Presidente's daughter. Hell yeah, it is. Live it up, bitch. <laughs> oh, uh, they're working on Severed. Severed. Mm -hmm. Which I believe, I, I remember looking it up because it, that's one of those names that's like terrifying and sounds like a horror title and it's not. Isn't it like cute though? Yeah. It's the cute, people were talking about it from E3 this year. It's actually about bunnies. Just happy bunnies. Severed. They just frolic You take about. control of a one-armed warrior named Sasha wielding a living sword. That was close. Not the game. So, I was maybe Sasha's of it all. like which a, a just makes bunny. me think of Transistor, honestly. Hmm. Is is she one armed in Transistor? No, but she has a sword that talks. No, same with just dust a talking and sword. Tail. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, but it's got um, Severed also has that same, uh, very similar, super cartoony art style that looks really cool. So we can at least like scratch the guacamole itch. Ah, yes. Okay. Well, all right, yeah. Well, should we pull another game or should we wait? Let's maybe do next... it in the next episode because yeah, the next so, episode's our wrap-up. Yeah, instead of, we're not going to play a game for the next episode of Game Club. We're going to talk about all of the awesome Game Club games we played this year and decide which our favorite was. And then we'll pick a new one for 2016. Yes. Guacamole, get it. It's yeah, good. It's get so it. good. So good. For 15 bucks, Worth it's the 15. Good, good, good buy, yeah. I think that's like the second time maybe ever we've said worth whatever. Everybody agreed worth, yeah. that 15 bucks or was worth a good it. price. All right. Well, yeah. thanks for joining us. We will see you next week uh, when we talk about a year in review of Game Club. So let's get ready to fight. We haven't been doing this for a year, have we? No, not a full year. Our house might have a spirit. They fucking moved it again! No, they didn't! No, they didn't!